following is an AZPM original production. Arizona Science is supported by Research Corporation for Science Advancement. For AZPM, I'm Leslie Tolbert, Regents Professor Emerita in Neuroscience at the University of Arizona, and this is Arizona Science. Our guest today is Lalitha Madhavan, Associate Professor of Neurology in the College of Medicine. Lalitha has a special focus on stem cell technologies that may be helpful in prevention or even treatment of really devastating degenerative diseases of the brain, including Parkinson's disease. Welcome back to our program, Lalitha. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So please give us a, a brief description of Parkinson's disease as a background for the studies you're doing. Yeah, so Parkinson's is actually quite a common neurodegenerative condition. Uh, in fact, it's the fastest growing neurological disorder that we know of currently. It affects the thinking of individuals, and there are no current treatments actually that can intervene in the progression of this disease. What happens to nerve cells in Parkinson's? A large part of that has been a mystery, and that's actually part of the problem with trying to develop cures for this condition. We know that there is a set of neurons called dopamine neurons deep in the brain that predominantly become dysfunctional or die off in this condition. But there are many other brain regions, and in fact, even regions outside the brain that are affected by Parkinson's that we know very little of. But the symptoms of this condition tell us a little bit that in fact, it's uh, more can be even considered a systemic disease than simply a brain disease. You've been using skin cells from people with Parkinson's that have actually Parkinson's disease markers in them. Tell us about that. We initially started off uh, wanting to make neurons from skin cells. So this is a very beautiful technology called in induced pluripotent technology. This allows for one to convert adult cells, like cells from the skin or cells from the blood, into nerve cells. And so our goal in obtaining these skin biopsies from patients or, or individuals with Parkinson's disease was to then make these skin cells, and then convert them into these induced pluripotent stem cells, which are really embryo-like cells, meaning that uh, because they're embryonic in nature, they can then become any other cell of the body. And so we wanted to make these embryo-like induced pluripotent stem cells and then make dopamine neurons and other types of nerve cells that are affected in Parkinson's. And we did. We figured out a way. We established the method in the lab, and we, we now have models from these iPS-derived neurons and other cells that tell us that cells from individuals with Parkinson's disease actually show a different biology than cells coming from healthy individuals. Even skin cells? Right, and, and that was the surprising part because along the way, <laughs> we noted that in fact the skin cells from which we originated these uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, they themselves were behaving differently whether they came from individuals with Parkinson's disease or not. So you can use skin cells from an easy biopsy from an individual to then study that individual's Parkinson's disease features. Exactly, yeah. And that was so surprising, but also so exciting to us, because obviously it's much more easier to obtain a skin biopsy and grow out these skin cells compared to then going through all of that genetic reprogramming process and then make the neurons and the nerve cells, etc., which takes a lot of time um, and resources. So it lets you determine the presence of Parkinson's, but then you can also use these skin cells to test all sorts of therapeutic ideas that you have. What are some of the exciting things that you're doing right now? You know, people have been putting Parkinson's all into one bucket. When it's really a very heterogeneous disease, it expresses differently in different people, uh, which means that different people, there might need to be different ways in which we treat different people and think about their disease differently. And we could test and make maybe see test drug A, B, and C, and see that drug A worked in patient A, but then drug B plus A was needed in patient B. Well, that's very, very exciting, and I wish you well. <laughs> Thank you, Lalitha. Thank you so much, Leslie. It was a pleasure. Lalitha Madhavan is an expert in the basic biology that underlies changes in Parkinson's disease, and she's a pioneer in advancing stem cell technologies. You can listen to this and all Arizona Science Conversations at azpm.org slash Arizona Science. I'm Leslie Tolbert.
Thank you to Research Corporation for Science Advancement for their support of Arizona Science. AZPM podcasts are made possible in part by donations from listeners like you. Learn more at support.azpm.org. Thank you.